Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode number 49 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And for the first time this season, I can proudly say I want to welcome in big leaguer Stephen Brault. Hi. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really good to be back. It is amazing. We're in Cincinnati right now. Uh, just it's just so funny, you know, like it was such a long time. And now that it's over, it's just like, oh, yeah, that was I don't know. It just seems like it went fast. But in the time, oh, my God, Phil, it feels like I was in Florida forever. You know, by so the way, it's, don't worry about making your bed. We, we don't. Is it? it is OK. Protocols and everything. They don't do room service in hotels anymore uh while you're here so i always uh now just tear apart beds so i figured i'd I'd give you the real this is this is what really happens the pillows all over the place because i like keep one under my legs you know and then i have one on my head and then i have one that i use for my arm it's all it's a whole a whole thing i need at least three pillows at this point to sleep comfortably all right i thought that trevor may was the weirdo of the rotation when it came to sleep habits are you seriously it sounds like you're pregnant because that's what my yeah. wife used to do. She would put one between her legs and then I'd have to put one at the small of her back. And do you really like position yourself a certain way? Yeah, because if I don't, um, I can like, I have this horrible natural tendency to when I sleep to to do this, right? So I like shrug up. So then I wake up in the morning and the first thing I have to do is like, oh, like relax my shoulders, my neck and my shoulders are all tight. Mm-hmm. So I have to like position myself correctly. Otherwise uh, I wake up, feeling like an old man i don't want to do that okay chris i'm not there yet i don't want to i don't want to have to worry about that yet um so yeah i have a system and it works pretty well i slept very well last night thank you for asking Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i'm a happy happy camper how did you sleep the night before your 2021 debut um i slept pretty well but you know it's actually funny we were you know it was a day game that i pitched and we played a night game the day before and of course the game went super long um, but I, I don't know. I, I think that I slept pretty well. I was able to fall asleep pretty quick because we got home so late. Um, and I usually wake up kind of early for day games if I'm pitching, you know, to try to get my body ready. Um, so I woke up like eight 30 and then I, I actually slept well. It was, it was, it was good. And I was very nervous when I finally got out there at first inning, I was, you know, adrenaline and, you know, little nerves and, kind of all over the place and gave up some it's it's so weird to be back like it's just it just feels right you know yeah well i was uh i'm not going to say i was nervous watching you i was excited and i was like okay you're leading the league in three two counts you know after which which i thought was that was fun uh, it was just nice to watch you get out there and compete. And yeah, I didn't even know who your third baseman was, but he made a couple of really good plays. Um, yeah, it was, uh, Rodolfo Castro. He's, okay. he's the guy that came up recently. He's been, he, he hit his first, I think it was his first, like five hits were all home runs. Set a major league oh, record right. first. Yeah. Right. Got it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's dude. I try to get ground balls, get weak contact as much as you can and just kind of you know, get a call every now and then is nice. Um, and, uh, and, you know, try to compete. It's, that's, that's what I got. I know. But was it, how did it compare to other big moments you've had in your career, whether you can't compare it to your major league debut, cause that's on such a different level, but because you were coming back from such a significant injury for the first time, were you like, I don't know, were you scared? Were you anxious or was it just flowing? I mean, I'm, I'm not scared or anxious about like the injury anymore. Um, I think it's been long enough when I first started throwing in games in rehab games, I was a little nervous, you know? Um, but that's, that's not really on my mind anymore. Now it's just about executing pitches and, you know, I had some, I had some good outings in AAA for rehab starts, but it's different. You know, you get to the big leagues and they are much better at laying off pitches that are just outside the zone. Um, different approaches, you know, you kind of have to, that's why I think I went so deep in so many counts. It's just because I wasn't finishing hitters as fast as I'd like to. Um, and so that's just, you know, stuff that you have to keep doing in the major leagues to get used to it again. You know, there's just nothing like it. You can't, 
replicate it anywhere because these are the best hitters in the world and and they're on the biggest stage so you know it's it's oof. and the brewers are a good team so mm-hmm. it's a good little first test you know coming back no um, it's great it was great and i gave up a double to wong which just bums me out yeah so it was good wait why does that bum you out more than anything else that i that i gave up a double to wong because he's left-handed and oh. I want to get every lefty out, and I just do a sl- the worst slider I've ever thrown, just right down the middle, and he hit it about 468 miles an hour off the bat. He got a double out of it, and then he scored. You know, so like terrible. You hate it. You hate to see it. Okay, but that was the one run you gave up in four innings. I thought it was masterful. I thought it was a great performance. Is it? Is there a different energy in the clubhouse for you because? For you, it's like this is opening day. This is great, and here are the rest. Here's the rest of the team, which for four months it hasn't gone the way they wanted it to. And these are the dog days, and these are the ones where you're trying to get through. And you're like, right, everybody's taking a deep breath. And here's little bouncy Stephen Brault, like, hey guys, let's go. Yeah, I I do have, but I would like to say I I always bring that. You know, even Doesn't if I was here the whole season, I'm always the bouncy, bubbly guy. Because I think the dog days of August or are, are, are July and August are just, they're false. They're fake. Everybody plays their best baseball in August, right? I mean, everybody plays well in this, like, second half of the year, I think, better than the first half. So I think the product of baseball in general is just better in the second half. Because all the mm-hmm. hitters have been hitting for months. All the pitchers have been pitching for months. So you're kind of built in everything. As long as people are staying healthy. I do think this is the best baseball there is. And that's why I think October baseball is so good because you've been through all of that, like all the, you know, getting your reps in and everything for so long, so consistently. And then you get this jolt of adrenaline about being in the playoffs. And so it's like fresh bodies, basically. Um, At least you fool yourself into thinking you have a fresh body for, you know, for a few weeks. So, um, yeah, I always think uh, I always love this part of the season. So I try to keep the bubbliness. Always. Yes, Always you bubble. do. King Bubble. King um, Bubble. Who'd you hear from text wise where you're like, ah, it was nice of you to reach out? Uh, I mean, I heard from a lot of people. Um, you know, it was, I think the mo- the one that means most to me are, you know, my family, my friends, uh, like from back home um, and getting those texts from my close friends, you know. But then also like my brothers and, and my parents, obviously. Uh, my dad sent me, I think the text said, um, wait, I got to read it word for word because it's so, it's so my dad. Um, but I mean, I got a lot of texts, you know, a lot of people were really nice and it's, it's, it's cool. I try to respond as much as I can. Okay. His, his text was not too bad for a first outing. Nice job. <laughs> Is that on brand for him? It's on brand. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about the things that went wrong than the things that went well, you know, try to always improve. Okay. Yeah. Was he, was dad tough? No, I mean, he's just, he's just uh, honest and he, he likes to make things like, make sure you're always getting better and never complacent, you know, like not too bad for a fa- first outing is right because it, what the results were good. Um, but you know, my stuff wasn't where I wanted it to be. And so there's still work to lots of work to be done moving forward. And no, I'm not <laughs> that it, the worst text I'll get if I do poorly are from my brother's. I'll do mm. poorly, and my brother will just be like, "Well, that was fucking terrible," and I'll, <laughs> you know, I was just like, "Yeah, well, you know," and and it's, but you know, we do it in jest. We just always, it doesn't matter what stage it's on. It's always they're always going to be my older brothers making fun of me if I don't do well, you know. So it's good. I wonder if they if they hunt social media, like if you've ever had a shitty outing and they start combing your, if they type your name in and see what all the the pirate fans are motherfucking you and stuff. Yeah, sometimes they'll they'll text me and be like, or we'll be on the phone and be like, yeah, I saw this guy on Twitter said something, you know, about how terrible you are or whatever. And I'm always like, you know, you it's it's random people on the internet. You don't have to look it up. Their opinion right. literally means nothing. So I mean, it's you don't have to, but I think it's natural, you know. Every now and then I'll search the Twitter sphere for my name and just be like, ooh, mm. yeah, you get somebody that's like. I love Stephen Brawl. He's so great. And then you have a bad outing and the same guy tweets like he's the worst pitcher. Never let him pitch ever again. You right. know, that kind of thing. And it, it's just funny. It's like, God, yeah. it's, it's baseball. You know? it, if you know somebody moderately famous and they say they've never searched their name on Twitter, they do it like three times a week. I just want to tell everybody that because we've all done yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, 
we've all done it. Yeah. It, Cause especially you do something night like good and you're like, I, I wonder if somebody, you know, if some people are talking about that. I did good things, you know, mm-hmm. it makes it feel good. So like getting a, a little heart, you know, a little like on Instagram, same thing. Back, uh, you know, I used to host the Fox Saturday baseball for, for Fox, you know, when we did the world series back then, and this was with 2009 through 2011. So I was the guy hosting the trophy presentation back yeah. in the day. And this was really when I think Twitter was just starting out. And my late sister got on the internet and she calls me afterward and she's crying. And I was like, Lori, what's wrong? And she goes, these people are being so mean to you. And I said, Lori, get, get the fuck off of the, uh, the computer. <laughs> Don't go there. I was like, it's a cesspool of negativity. And uh-huh. she was, you know, she was a senior in high school when I was born. So I was the baby brother. She was always so protective. Mm-hmm. And I would tell her, I said, Lori, you cannot do that. Like if you just can't do it, they will. They're going to kill me. They're going to take shots at me. They're going to be like, you called Derek Jeter Jeets. What are you doing <laughs> calling him Jeets? Like, I still get that one, but uh, like enough. So if you, if you do that, you're going to drive yourself nuts. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's always going to be uh, negative people. I mean, even like we were talking about earlier, like when Garrett Cole, you know, the whole Garrett Cole had a bad outing, his next outing and, you know, Yankees fans like calling for him to be like, oh, he's the worst. He's terrible. And it's like, Guys, he had one bad start. It was it was poorly timed. Yes, it was unfortunate timing. But then, you know, he's been Garrett Cole again. So, like, chill out. You know, it's going to be okay. Yeah. No, I get it. We will be right back to the Chris Rose rotation. But first, can I tell you guys about cushy dreams? Have them every night. Head hits the pillow. I just start thinking about that good CBD. Because guess what? It's 100% legal. Do you like that? You should, unless you're a bad boy, I guess. Or gal. But no, this is the legal stuff. Looks exactly like Mary Jane, its evil cousin. Man, if you haven't tried CBD, give it a try. It can change your life. It can help you sleep. It can help you relax. And if you're worried, you know, it comes. We got nugs right here. What do I got? The dream? <laughs> Cushy dream dream. <laughs> yeah, I bet. But hey, get yourself the pre-roll. That's no work. As long as you can find fire to light it, you can get involved. They've got all sorts of different relax, create, hustle, peace, energy, dream, whatever you're looking for. Indicas and sativas. Indica, into couch if you're looking to relax a little bit, maybe some sativas if you're trying to get a little creative, get funky. And most importantly, we love Cushy Dreams. They love us. Met the dudes. They're good guys. They're from the Bronx, and they just started doing this, and they're taking off, and a lot of you have been indulging. And good, treat yourself. Give it a shot. Why not? YOLO. You only live once. That's the motto. That's a yellow every day. Every day. Oh, copyright. Guys, and with promo code ROSE, R-O-S-E, you get 20% off. Your next order, that's promo code ROSE. 20% off, doesn't have to be your first, doesn't have to be your last. They don't ask me to say that, but I like saying that. Your next order, promo code ROSE, 20% off, CushyDreams.com. Go check it out. Get it as a gift for anyone and everyone. Cushy Dreams, check them out. Back. Were you proud of your first at bat against Freddie Peralta? I was, I was, I, I'm super bummed I struck out, but he's like a huge strikeout pitcher. I haven't actually watched the at bat yet. So I, as soon as I took that first pitch, I was like, God, I should have swung at that. That was ridiculous. Um, but you'll see, I definitely think he strikes me out with a ball right here. Yes. You walked away. I was like, yep. Okay. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, these are like down the middle, right. And I'm on time. Like, and I just can't, I just can't get on top of it. His fastball looks like it's straight as an arrow. And then when you swing at it, it just like is above your bat though. It doesn't make any sense. So it's like really awkward to have to have that as my first at bat back because uh, he's absolutely nasty. One of the best pitchers in baseball. I think he's me and my friend were talking about how he's probably one of the most underrated players in baseball this year. I mean, he's got a two one. I mean, he's doing incredible 
and nobody's talking about him because it's not like all that flashy, I guess. He just throws fastballs and has, you know, a decent slider, decent curveball. Um, but his fastball is just so good. It's so hard to hit, especially when he gets it to the top of the zone. So, but I was proud of it. Yeah. I texted him afterwards. I messaged him on Instagram. I was like, you know, hey, man, you're nasty. It was nice to, you know, pitch against you first start back. And, and he said something like, yeah, it's good to have you back and all that stuff. Uh, he's a good guy. I've always- That's very nice. So we, we were even. So there. Yeah. Okay. That, that was, I, I thought it was very cool. Uh, it was a good at bat, particularly when you, you have to remember, you didn't hit in 2020 either. So even though you hit 400 one year at Regis University, it's a little different than when you're facing Freddie Peralta out of the gate. Just want to say. It is. Yeah, it is. And I, you know, I only started hitting after I started doing rehab starts because I wasn't hitting was not going to be the reason that no. I like got hurt again. I had a setback. So I didn't start hitting until like, you know, like two weeks ago. And I, that was my first live pitching I've seen since <laughs> 2019. <laughs> Other than I played a beer league baseball game with my cousin last off season and took an at bat against some guy throwing like 60 miles an hour. So that was, that's the only one. Okay. But that's below hitter speed. You probably, you probably struggled with, you probably popped it up. I actually, I got a base hit, but it was like a hard ground ball between first and second base. If they were playing the shift, that was definitely out. (laughs) By the way, with that, after that at bat, because I think I was on the phone with my oldest son, he was like, Boy, Brault really made him work. I was like, yeah, that's this is what he does. He grinds out at bats. I guarantee you, Sheltie was probably like, might have to pencil this guy in the lineup pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I've, you know, yesterday, um, I actually was, I, I have to be ready to be called for a pinch hit, you know, because if there's a situation early in the game and they don't want to use a real, real pinch hitter yet, then that mm-hmm. would be a situation where I might get in that bat. Um, and I did that before. I did that a decent amount actually in 19. So I'm I'm ready for that if it if that has to happen. Cuz basically all of our bats as pitchers are pinch hits anyways because we hit so few and far between. So getting a random pinch hit appearance is pretty much, you know, just like what we do when we actually go get in a bat in the game we pitch. So it's good. And then I got a bunt down. Yeah. For first uh took a ball and then got a bunt down. Getting bunts down is the best feeling. You feel like you just like, "Oh, as you're jogging to first, you're seeing the guy run to third, and you're just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, let's go!" I, <laughs> it's such a I, nice feeling. I gotta admit, I was a little pissed they didn't give you a chance to pull it through the right side. Just wanted to say there was no out, so I wanted to see if you could rip it. Yeah, um, I got the before I went up to the plate. Shelty pulled me over and said, "Hey, runner on first or second, you are absolutely bunting." And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sounds good." Yeah. So, you know, I'll earn the hitting rights back over time, maybe. Um, I don't know if you've noticed since the last – something's changed with me since the last time I saw you. You shaved your face. Yes, I did. It's been very controversial. Uh, I like it. I'm a clean-shaven guy, too. So I, I'm, I'm a fan. But how's, how's Mrs. Rose? How's, how's she taking it? Well, you know, she's the reason I grew it out in the first place. I know. Remember? Yeah. So let's just say uh, things since I shaved a week ago, things have been a little. I've gotten a lot of DNPs. I did not plays. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Dude, it's it's uh, OK. I think I, I'm not going to say you look younger. But I think you look it just when you have the beard, you look uh, like more grizzled does that make sense and now you look like good old nice chris rose like you just this this is what i'm used to i'm used to clean shaven chris rose so the beard was different for me do i look you said i'm not gonna say you look younger do i look 50 or not no i mean i think if you had your hat off and you had the gray hair you'd look 50 but I don't have gray hair. First of all, my hair is shitty. This is why I've got it. Although it's not that bad today. I've got a little bit of gray on the sides. But yeah, for the you most got the white part, walls. Yeah. But really, for the most part, it's not, you know. Right. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you uh, 43. Does that work for you? Hell yes. I'd take 43 <laughs> again. Are you kidding me? That's pre-back surgery. 
you know Ooh. yeah i'd definitely take that i would definitely make take yourself that. sound old um pre-back surgery can we tell shelty to clean up his beard i don't know what's going on is he living in a tree or something he he loves that thing I, it's actually funny you say it because i was looking at it yesterday we had a, like a meeting and i was looking at it yesterday and he was really letting it come down like yes. kind of pointed on the chin uh-huh. and it's so white on the bottom of so the chin white. i don't know i think it's pretty good it's pretty intimidating especially the uh the sleeveless cut off hoodie you know uh-huh. just a solid manager look right there the sunglasses the big old beard the sleeveless hoodie i'm in on it big time and tell him hi for me that's quite a good look for him yeah i will um <clears throat> have you spoken to adam frazier since he has departed pittsburgh i have not so usually the way that i do this is uh, i let things kind of calm down right the trade happens. He's going to be getting a bunch of calls and texts and all that stuff. Um, and since I wasn't there, uh, I wasn't able to say bye to him. I figured I'd wait for a little bit and then, you know, I'll call him one of these days and, and we'll chat and everything about being in San Diego and all that stuff. But, um, but it was, it was a bummer. Just, I, you know, it, the worst part about that for me personally is that I've played with him for years and because I was hurt, I wasn't able to be there when he got traded, you know? Um, so I was bummed about that, but I'll call him one of these days. Uh, yeah. Did any of your buddies in San Diego who are still Padres fans call you and be like, so give us a skinny on this guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of a lot of friends in San Diego like, you know, guys, the Padres keep trading for the Pirates, but they're not taking you. And I'm like, I know. Um, but they have, uh, yeah, they, you know, hey, is this guy like really good? And I'm like, dude. Yeah, he just hits. He's just going to keep hitting always. He'll never stop. So they got a good one there. I think he's going to be solid um, wherever they decide to put him. I, I don't know if is he – I haven't been watching the Padres, so I don't know. Is he playing every day mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, yeah, I mean, it's just going to help your offense. There's no question. It's interesting. You just said, you know, we're trading for all the Pirates, but not you. If you had been healthy – you probably would have been traded this year. Am I, do you, does that ever creep into your brain? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, of course, as trade deadline stuff gets going, you always think about it. You always think about who are the guys that, you know, the pirates might be trading this year. We all like to play GM. That's what we say. We play GM. We sit around the table when we, you know, after the game and drink a beer and talk about what might happen, you know, all that stuff. But yeah, I, I knew that there would be a possibility this year if I got to the trade deadline healthy that I might have gotten, you know, traded if I was doing well. But um, but now I don't have to worry about it. So now I get to be a bucko for a little while longer. Hopefully, you know, I would like to stay here. So it would be nice if I could, um, you know, sign back after the end of the season and everything. So we'll see how everything goes. But it's weird now because people don't stay in the same organization all that often, you mm-hmm. know. Lots of trades, lots of DFAs and signings and just the way it works now. So it would be cool to play for the same team the whole, you know, your whole major league career. It'd be sweet. So we'll, we'll see what happens. How do you balance, though, the fact that, I mean, you're not 24. Okay, you're 29. Yeah. Um, you really, I felt like your career started to take shape last year. Mm-hmm. And I imagine that you feel like you're a guy that could help a team in these dog days in August, in September. And unfortunately the team you're playing for has not been in that situation. How do you balance that of wanting to like, I really want to play in some meaningful games here and still well, should, want to show allegiance yeah. to the team you work for. I, I, I say that I was just talking to our bullpen catcher yesterday Alberto Andrade. Um, and yeah, we were talking about that. And I was like, I would love to be like, cause I was with the pirates right after, you know, I made my debut in 16. We had made the playoffs in 13, 14 and 15 in 16. We had basically the same team, but everybody got hurt. And so that's why all of us young guys, we were all 24 made our debut in 16 was because everybody got hurt. So then after everybody got hurt, they, you know, we didn't make the playoffs. That's when they started kind of, um, blowing apart the team, I guess. And it's been that way for the last few years. And uh, it's been interesting, but 
you know, I've been through, you know, in 18, we were over 500. It was only one game over 500, but we were. Um, and then, you know, 19, we didn't do well. We had that really bad second half. And then 20, we were just terrible. Um, but we lost a lot of one run games. So it was kind of a bummer. And then this year hasn't gone the way we wanted to. And I would love to be a part of the Pirates winning. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would be like getting trade to another team and, you know, winning, but they were already winning and just helping them win. Like, it's cool, you know, but I think it'd be way cooler to be on this team as we progress and get those young guys, you know, where they're ready to fully, you know, be major leaguers and comprise a team that can make the playoffs and make a run in the playoffs. And I would love to be here doing that here. And I think that would be much more like gratifying, you yeah. know, totally rewarding. I can see that. It is everyone's favorite time of year, right around the corner. College football. Oh my God. A good college football Saturday. Does it get better than that? It kind of doesn't. You get the one o'clock, you get the noon games, the three thirty, And then if you get a good night game, like, that's a Saturday, and those are coming up soon. And with DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook app, oh, my God, $200, $200 in free bets? I just had to check that a couple times. $200 in free bets instantly if you bet $1 or more on any college football game. People, they're making it easy for you. You know I like easy. They're making it easy for you. Take advantage of this offer now. $200 in free bets when you place a bet of $1 or more on any college football game. Guys, DraftKings Sportsbook app. They are the best. It's safe, secure, reliable. It's in the U.S. It's easy to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. So go win some money and then go spend it and then win more money and spend it because that's life a little bit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any college football game. That's promo code ROSE to get your free $200 in free bets instantly. Limited time only. DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gaming prom. Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Bang. So last Friday was the trade deadline. You were with the team at the time, right? I wasn't. Well, you weren't. No, that's why I didn't get to... Uh, I didn't get to... Well, Frazier was already Frazier. gone. Right. Um, I was... Let's see, that would have been 30th, 31st. No, I wasn't. You weren't even there yet. I wasn't there yet. Was I uh, there? The 30th. Well, yeah, I had to have been there. I'm terrible with timing. But we, no, I couldn't have because we had Richie Rodriguez get traded. No, I was not there. I was in um, St. Paul, Minnesota. Minnesota, don't you know? Uh, so I was, I was not there. But I have been there for trade deadlines before. You know, I was there when we traded away Glass Now and Meadows for Archer. Um, that was that blew up. Our minds that kind of just came out of nowhere because you just you just think they'll never trade glass now you know he was always just such a big high prospect 610 throwing 100 miles an hour he wasn't doing very well at the time but you still thought there's no way um so that was a surprise and i was there when melanson got traded that was when i was my first year in 16 and that was emotional because he had been there you know through their playoff times and it was my second day in the big leagues and <laughs> Melanson got traded and he was like crying and giving people hugs. And I'm like, I do not belong here right now. It's just, it's crazy. Especially these guys that have been with these teams for years. You and know, we lost you for a second. Who, who'd you say was tearing up in the dugout? Chris Bryant. Oh, that, that, that yeah, video. That, yeah. There were some people who were saying, Hey, listen, don't show that. Don't show that on, on TV or on social media. Like I always thought that once you come out in the dugout, you kind of know it's fair game, whatever's out there, you know, you could be recorded. Right. Yeah. But also like, that's a real human moment, you it know, is. 
like I'm okay with that being shown, you know, it shows, it, it reminds people like, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. this is tough for us too. You know, it's not, it's not like we're just like willy nilly, like, Oh yeah, I'll just go move my entire life to a different city. Um, so I, I don't mind it. I, I think you're right. It was in the dugout. You're on camera whenever you're in the dugout. Um, but I think it was a, it was maybe not, he didn't necessarily want it to be seen. You know, he wasn't trying to be seen, but I don't know. I don't think he would have minded. No, if anything I, makes Cubs fans love you. <laughs> you know, I thought it was as real a moment as we get because we mm -hmm. tend to, here's what fans think. All we care about are, well, what prospects did we give up? And how's this guy going to fit in our lineup? We don't think about, Oh my God. Imagine if somebody walked into, if somebody walked into my room right now and was like, you got to get on a plane and go to Connecticut. You just, you you have to move. I'd be like, I'm so, wait, whoa, 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 what? Like my son's about to start school. He's about to be a sophomore. Like I can, I'm not moving. No, no, no. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. We traded you. You have no say in this. That is a, uh, and people will say, well, I don't care. I mean, Chris Bryant's getting paid $16 million or whatever. You're still a human being. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. I got traded when I was making, you know, $6,000 a year in the minor leagues. So it's jarring. It's really weird. You get a call from, the, you know, at, at the time, the minor league GM from the Orioles, and he just goes, hey, we traded you to the Pirates. Somebody from the Pirates will call you. Thanks for all your hard work. See you later. <laughs> and that's it. And you're, you're not an Oriole anymore, you know? And then somebody from the Pirates calls you and says, hey, we just traded for you. Happy to have you. See you in spring training in two days. And it's like, okay, I guess I have to go make all new friends now because everybody that I just got close with over the last two years, I'm not going to see anymore because you don't see them at the field and you mostly don't live in the same place as people in the offseason. So it's, it's crazy. It's a huge difference. The human element is very real there, but it's not, it, people don't see it that way all the time. I think. Were you, did you cry when you got traded? No, but I, uh, so I got called, I was actually, I was at my friend's house. There were like eight of us doing like a going away party, which the way I am, I'm a nerd. So what that means for us is we hooked up two old Xboxes and we played Halo 3 against each other on two separate TVs <laughs> <laughs> and we drank beer because uh, that's, that's the fun way to do it. So that's what I'm doing. And I get a call from, and I'm, I'm leaving for spring training the next day. This is when I used to drive to spring training from San Diego to Sarasota for the Orioles. And it's like 36 hours, three day drive. And I'm sitting there and I get a call from my GM. And as soon as you see that, it's like, there's no reason he would be calling me other than you're released, you're traded. That's it. So I answer it and my friends are like, what's going on? And I'm like, I got traded. I got traded to the, to the pirates. Like, I don't, I don't know. And then, and it was, so it was kind of like exciting, but confusing, if that makes sense. It's like, oh, at least this, this other team clearly wants me, you know, so that's nice. Um, but then, yeah, it kind of hits you. Like, I have to make a lot of new friends, and I did. And I've been with the Pirates since, obviously, which has been nice. But it was funny because my drive was going to be 36 hours to Sarasota, but instead I drove 35 hours and 40 minutes to Bradenton. If somebody told me I have to drive 35 hours and 40 minutes to Bradenton, Florida, I would find another profession. I could not do it. <laughs> I struggled with five hours and 40 minutes from LA to Arizona this summer. Oh, I can drive. I got no problem driving. Oh, cause distances. you sing in the car the whole time. I do. I do. Actually, I have a, like a system when I'm going to do a long drive, I download like 20 new albums that I've never heard before. And I listen to them all progressively through the trip, find new music. Um, but I do sing a lot as well. Yes. But I, you know, when I, when I was a kid, we drove around the country in a motorhome. So I, uh, long drives are, are, I'm used to it. Michelle has always regretted we never took our two sons on a motorhome trip. 
Exactly. Well, my parents took their four sons on motorhome trips, and it was probably a fiasco most of the time. But uh, we had fun with it. I have a great memories from motorhoming across the country as a kid. Amazing memories. So all like all six of you stayed in the motorhome, and oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm off base here. It sounds about <laughs> like one of the three or four least appealing things I could ever do in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we had a good time with it. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, we'd go stop at RV campgrounds and you'd be there for a few days and then we'd go watch a baseball game, you know, somewhere, whatever, whatever city we were near, we'd go watch a baseball game. Like we, you know, we broke it up, obviously, mm-hmm. but that's a lot of time just driving in a motor. A lot of cards, a lot of card games, a lot of Pokemon cards, uh, you know, Mad Libs. Uh, Mad libs, yeah, great one, and that's Uh-oh. why I've watched Field of Dreams probably 180 times, maybe 200 times, because that was we had like three movies: Field of Dreams, Galaxy Quest, and I think we had like Signs or something like that. Signs, yeah, but you're an M Night guy. I was, uh, but Galaxy Quest, hilarious movie, and then Field of Dreams is you know Field of Dreams, so then we just would watch it over and over again on this. I, we, you know, it was tiny little box TV, literally probably like uh, eight inch diet or eight inch, whatever you screen. And we'd mm-hmm. watch movies. It was awesome. Are you, um, are you disappointed that you're not playing in the field of dreams game and our buddy Lucas Giolito is <laughs> so disappointed. Oh my God. I've been there a few times. It's really cool. Um, but they built that stadium. And I haven't been there since they built the stadium, but I cannot wait to watch that game. That's going to be so cool. Yeah, he's he's excited that he doesn't have to pitch, so he, he just gets to enjoy it. it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably the way to go. Um, cool. Did you see the uniforms? The, yeah, the Yankees are super boring, but the White Sox ones are sick. Yes, see, I'm all in favor of the White Sox ones because it really looks like like Ray Liotta should get in it bad. I think. Right. Yeah. The they look. And the Yankees. In New York. Man. It looks like they bought them at a sporting goods store and threw a swoosh on them. Yeah. I don't understand why they. I mean, but I guess the Yankees have just had those uniforms forever. So it's just like, looks like an, they're trying to go old timey, but it, but it's just gray and says New York across the front. You know, it's not very exciting. Those White Sox ones, though, are dope. Yeah. No, I'm in. Lance Lynn looking. Looking nasty there. I'm guessing he's throwing a fastball right there. I, I could be wrong. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. What was the best? Ninety percent chance. What was the best baseball trip you went on as a family? Oh, easily going to see Tony Gwynn get inducted to the Hall of Fame. Oh. We drove from San Diego to Cooperstown, but we did it. We split it up. So, like, me and my brother and my dad drove out there, and it took us. You know, we. It took a few weeks. We watched ball games in probably six different stadiums on the way out there. And then uh, stayed in a lake house after the induction ceremony and being at the Hall of Fame for a day or two. And then uh, me and that brother Jack, we flew home and drove on the way back. Yeah. So we split it up because we were all older at that point. And I was 12. And my oldest brother was 17. So having four kids that age would be tough. You know, we weren't little anymore. So, um, dude, it was so cool. It was so much fun. But that was definitely the most baseball-themed trip, obviously. And uh, Arkin Jr. and Tony Gwynn getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. It was sick. That ain't bad. No. That ain't bad. Hey, speaking of Padres. Yeah, you think? Mm. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, sports management worldwide. This is a company that trains you to be an MLB agent, a scout, an associate scout, a bird dog scout, a sports broadcaster, anything you need. They offer uh, courses that are eight weeks long. They're online. They give you what you need to know and who you need to know. And it's from some of the best that have ever been involved in the game of baseball. You've got baseball player development course with uh, Dan Duquette, a former GM, a baseball agent course with MLB agent Oscar Suarez, 
baseball GM and scouting course with former Dodger GM Dan Evans and MLB scout Hank Jones as well. And of course, baseball analytics course with Ari Kaplan, which was taken by Kansas City Royals manager Mike Matheny. So make sure you get in, you pick the course that you want, eight weeks online. They will tell you who is hiring. They have all the connections, so they're there to help. So all you have to do is apply free at smww.com and use the discount count code ROSE for $50 off the course of your choice. You want to get involved in sports? It's not just baseball. They take care of football. They take care of basketball, hockey, everything across the sporting globe. They are the answer for you. I want to circle back to the Padres. So all your Padres buddies, they had the roller coaster of emotions with the Scherzer stuff. He's going to be a Padre, yeah. and then the deal's not done, and all of a sudden the Dodgers swoop in. Did you talk to any of your your buddies? Like, are they all okay? They, yeah. I mean, it was like you know, you get the text at first, like, "Oh my God, it's sure is going to be a Padre," and then it gets quiet, and then it's like, "Oh no, oh no." <laughs> but like, I don't think people are giving enough credit to the fact that that's a ridiculously humongous trade to have Scherzer and Trey Turner in the same trade to the same team is absurd. Like just the fact they were on the same team by, you know, kind of by chance, obviously they traded for Scherzer, but Turner came up with them after getting traded away from San Diego. Right. Right. He went San Diego. And then like, it was a three team trade. It was San Diego, Tampa Bay, Washington. And it was weird. He had been traded, I think to Washington, as the player to be named later, but he was still part of the Padres organization. It was a really weird thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like that is an, an enormous trade. Huge that they're both going to the Dodgers. And of course, Scherzer did well. I haven't seen what Trey Turner's done, but I'm sure he's doing nothing because he's he's been on the COVID list. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Classic. Classic COVID list. Mm-hmm. But he will do well because he's Trey Turner and he's very, very good at baseball. Mm-hmm. Can I ask but, you about COVID? Uh, yeah, what do you want? Do you guys talk about it at all in the clubhouse? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's always always an ever omnipresent thing, you know? Seems like it's never going away. And we got the resurgence of the Delta and doing more testing and stuff again, but nothing. I mean, obviously, it's not like it was last year where we were boxed off. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's always there, you know? trying to trying to get through the season without getting it you know i got vaccinated as soon as i could and i think everybody should get vaccinated but that's not for me to say i guess but um you know what i want to stop you there though what isn't it like i'm i got vaccinated the first chance i could too and When people say, in particular, when you're in a team setting where you don't have the opportunity to get away from people, you are in close quarters, you are in a clubhouse, like it's not okay for you to go up to somebody and say, hey, listen, man, I care as much about you as I do about me. I want you to be okay. So that's why I'm doing this. That's why I've been masked. That's why I'm doing, and I get it. Like there's probably some people listening that are going to be like, oh, really? We're going to go down this road? Well, shit, we're back here again. I know, right? We're back here again. We're not done. So why can't we have these grown-up conversations instead of being like, well, it's such a political thing. Why can't we just talk about it? I have, and I do. I've talked to, but I I prefer one-on-one conversations. I don't try to trumpet my beliefs from the mountaintops. It's, I think that the best way to get through anything is to have, you know, conversation one-on-one. Um, so I've had some of those conversations. It's just kind of asking that why. Why don't you want to do it? You know, what, what is, what is the big deal about it that makes you not want to do it? And most of what I've gotten from people in baseball and people out of baseball is because they don't want to be told what to do is kind of what I've gotten. And I understand that as a freedom, you don't want to be told what to, what to do and what to force upon your body. Like, I mean, I get it just to me, it just seems like, we have we have a whole system in place that is we pay you know the government pays what is it like 6.5 billion dollars a year to take care of these things and to help us when a pandemic happens that is literally the whole point and then we choose not to believe them it's like 
why would you not believe the people who this is their entire life? It's not some random person on Facebook saying that it's going to give you microchips or something. You know, it's it's a a group and organization that is made specifically to help us weather these kind of storms. Mm-hmm. And and still people choose to believe, you know, a random person saying that it's bad instead of this organization that's like, dude, we've been doing vaccines for so long. Vaccines work. It's the reason that nobody gets polio anymore. Right. Like, do you want to get the measles? No. Sick. Then we'll vaccinate your child. Like, it's just, it blows my mind. Um, it does. And I'm curious, have you been successful in these one-on-one conversations at all? Or is it just frustration at the end, like a lot of us? It's, it's you know, mostly frustration. But it's, I, I mean, I can't, I can't tell anybody to do anything. I, right. I wish I could, but I can't. So that's why I have the conversations because I at least want to know what the reasoning is. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and if the reasoning is, I don't believe that the government should tell me what I have to put in my body. All right. I mean, yeah. Okay. I can understand that. I, I wish you wouldn't. I wish you wouldn't, but I understand it. So I appreciate your honesty. And I, I know it's not, it's really a, it's uncomfortable conversation because for whatever reason over the last, since the vaccines have been come available, it's an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know why either, but it, but it is. And yeah, I, I don't want to go through this again, but it looks like, you know, we're going through it again. And right. Probably- I, I was just curious on it from a team dynamic because you don't have your choice is you could walk away and not play baseball, but if you don't, then you have to rely on other people making good decisions, which is very, very challenging. You're on planes with, people you're in a clubhouse with the people it's not like you can constantly be socially distant it's it's a risk yeah it's it's a risk but you know i feel i've protected myself the best i can so Mm -hmm. i will continue to uh to live my life and when it comes to you know like san diego this off season i feel like we're probably we might get you know locked down again and that would be a real bummer because i haven't gotten to have a real off season in a few years you know (laughs) So that would be nice, but hey, we'll see what happens. Speaking of San Diego, you know, my oldest son has lived down there and we just moved him into his brand new place. He's like, do you think Stephen Brault would hang out with me in the offseason? I was like, probably not. <laughs> I said, I'll have to ask him, though. I'm not going to put him on the spot or anything, but yeah, we can hang out. I got, yeah. I got lots of time. Well, you've, you've, you've met Josh and you guys are, are have very similar interests. We do. You know, he's he's a musician. Yeah. It's all inked up. Love it. He doesn't doesn't throw 93 unless you add his two pitches together of 47 oh, okay. and 46. Well, that, that, I think that counts. Yeah. And then it's 93. It's 93, 93, every two pitches combined. Yeah. He's very tall though. You'll be surprised. Really? I'm, I always find that I always, um, I'm always shorter than people think I am. You know what I mean? What do you list, what are you listed at? I think I'm listed at six foot, either six foot or six one. One of those I'm, I'm right in the middle. So. Okay. It, don't be don't be startled. Josh is six four. Yeah. Well, all of my friends are six four. It seems like so. I won't be surprised. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, I want to ask you this. You talked about all all the players that want to be GMs and stuff. So you must have loved this when the, the Cubs made all their big trades. Uh, Rizzo, Baez, Bryant. Yeah. Which one will have the biggest impact down the stretch? I can ask you because the Pirates are done with all three of those teams. Yeah. Um, so, so far it's been Rizzo, even though Chris Bryant did have that double the other day. Um, but I think, I think it's going to be Bryant. I think Chris Bryant going to San Francisco is a huge impact there. He's such a good player, solid bat in the lineup, consistent. Um, and he's a really good defender as well. And I think he's a perfect fit in San Francisco. Um, as far as like, I, I think that Rizzo is going to be a huge benefit to the, Yankees just because he's Anthony Rizzo and him hitting in that right field porch is going to be very nice. Like what Gallo did yesterday with the ball went straight up in the air and still was a home run. Um, And then I don't know. I think Javi Baez is, I think he's a really good player, but I think that was kind of weird to me because they had McNeil and they have Lindor already. So it seems like a really solid middle infield to me, but. I don't know. Well, Lindor's banged up still for a couple more weeks. And 
Yeah. So I guess you're trying to um, fight through this, you know, that whole weather the storm. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be Brian. I think Chris Bryant's going to, because those, the Giants, they needed that just a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more. They've been a really, really good team. And now they have like a superstar because they didn't have one. Right. You know? That's why that team has been so cool, I think, to watch because it's just a consistently across the board, just good team playing good baseball consistently um, and winning games because of it. And now it's like, all right, now we're ready to sign this one guy who's going to be kind of our, you know, other than Buster Posey, our kind of like central part of the lineup, big RBI guy. And, uh, and they've, it's awesome. And I think they're going to, I think they're going to do some good things. There's no question. Chris Bryant can be what Buster Posey was in 2012. Yeah, absolutely. He's that good. And, and he's got, do you know what his numbers are against you? Oh, they're so good. Um, Please tell me. I know, I know. He always gets his off me. He's eight for 16 with two homers. Yeah, that sounds about right. I would have guessed like four homers, so I'll take that. But you kill Anthony Rizzo. I know. But Rizzo has a grand slam against me. Oh, that was that game we talked about. That was the game. That was the game game. where – where intentional talk got knocked off the air because it took so long for the pirates and comes to play that day. Yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, I know. I think Riz only has like three hits off me. Three for 17. Yeah. I can, I can name the three hits. Isn't that, isn't that funny? And two hits are singles to the left side. And one of them is a grand slam. How funny is that? But you'll take three for 17 against a really good player. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I mean, the, those second two hits are both in the same game. It was a ground ball to the left side, but we were shifting him. So it got, you know, bounced through. That was his first hit against me. And then the second one was the grand slam. So got it. Do you want to know what you are against Baez? I think it's more middling. It's it's not as extreme as either of those two. It's five for sixteen with two with a homer. I remember the homer. It was a three one, tried to throw a sinker away. I threw it right down the middle. He hit it to right center. No doubt or off the bat. I remember You're that. like a golfer. Golfers can remember every shot they've ever hit. <laughs> this is remarkable that you know all this shit off the top of your head. Well, it's easy to remember homers. Like Chris Bryant has the softest homer I've ever given up. It was also in that, that five home run game. It was 91 miles an hour off the bat. The wind was blowing like 25, degree, 25 miles an hour straight out, and it landed in the little basket. It like, it like jammed him. And off the bat, it was just kind of like one of those clunk, like not like a smack, it's a clunk. And I was like, sick. And then it just kind of kept going. And I was like, there's no way that ball is going to get out. And it did. It was crazy. 91 miles an hour off the bat. That should not happen. <laughs> he should give it uh, back to you. It should not count. Yeah. So there's like, it is funny you say that because I do remember most things, especially things of consequence, home runs, um, strikeouts, stuff like that. But now we're just going to show Chris Bryant getting homers off me. That's sick. Thanks, Rob. You're the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, let it be known if you saw that. That was that was the game where I still went seven innings. Only that was the only run I gave up. Okay, so there. Still, yeah, Rob. Why don't you show yeah. any of that shit, Rob? Rob. God, what a jerk. <laughs> uh, anyway, you want to show me giving up grand slam too, Rob? It's the only one I've ever given up in my entire life. Um, your, yeah. your, your entire life, you've only given up one grand slam. Yeah, one grand slam. Grand slams are hard to come by. Okay, you have to load the bases and then you have to hit a homer. It takes a while. It's a lot of. Oh, is that how it's done? I was very confused. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, I, I have a. Here's a good one. I had never given up a home run to a lefty in professional baseball until I gave one up in 2017 to this kid on the Royals. So really? for four years, I had never given up a home run to a lefty. Yeah. You don't, you don't remember who it was, do you? I don't remember his name. He was one of those, it was a huge dude, big lefty. And it's like, you know, Oh, something or, or mix something. It was. Oh, O'Hearn. Yeah. Taylor. No, not. Was it O'Hearn? Is that Taylor? It's something like that. Yeah. And I uh, threw a slider that he like, just kind of 
fly ball that landed in the first row of that high wall in, in PNC Park. Um, that was the first one I had given up to a lefty. And I didn't even know it until somebody, you know, tweeted about it or something. Mm. Okay. Ryan O'Hearn. Ryan O'Hearn. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Very good. The, the voice yeah, of Rob. Yeah, I remember speaks. that stuff. I think, I think that's pretty standard, though. I think most people, most pitchers remember pretty much everything. Rob, would you like to defend yourself to Stephen Brault as to why you just started showing home run after home run? Oh, I just, I, yeah, I just like to put things into context, you know, just put a little picture to the, to the story. Man, I, I don't like you anymore, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm done. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Steven. It's not Steve. Steven. My bad. My apologies again. It's Mr. Brawl to you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Who calls you Steve, by the way? Um, like Musgrove, JMO. They call me Steve. Uh, my high school coach calls me Stevie. He's the only person who calls me Stevie. Stevie, I can get behind. Yeah, and then everybody else calls me Steven or Brawlty. Uh, you look like a Steven. I don't... Steve's too weird. Steve's like grown-up adult, you know? And I uh, just did this when I said grown-up adult, so I'm clearly not that guy. Hi there, Steve Brawls. Well, but when you introduce yourself, you introduce yourself as Steven Brawl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Steven. Yeah. By the way, I think the first time I ever put your name in my phone, I went PH instead of V. It's tough to hear. Steve. Stephen. Stefan. Stefan. Yeah. I, I've, uh, my mom is very big on the fact that Stephen should be spelled with a V. She was very adamant about that. Okay. Good. All right, Stephen. <clears throat> it's time to spin the wheel of moderately interesting things. Let's do it. All right. We got some new categories for you. Oh, exciting. Only fans. Oh, God. <laughs> I already took my clothes off once for this podcast, okay? That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, you're going to have to blame Mrs. Rose for this one because this was her category. This is what we do on, like, date night. We sit around and think of categories for the wheel of moderately guys, interesting you things. You guys post your only fans? What's happening it, right now? It's... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and if you act now, you get 20% off your first order. This is not an ad. This is not an ad, everybody. Not an ad. Uh, Only fans. The um, most passionate or the team you're most passionate about sports-wise, rooting for, not the Pirates, but, like, what team do you live and die with? Oh, I mean, I've always lived and died with the Padres, you know, growing up. That was who we followed. And 1998, I was six years old. I went to a playoff game, and Ken Caminetti hit a grand slam. It was like one of the coolest moments of my life, except my dad made us leave early because he had to go to work. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, like, I've always been such a huge Padres fan that now to this day, I still, you know, I watch some of their games and I keep up with what they're doing. Um, it's obviously a little bit different now that I'm playing against them. But um, like if they make the playoffs this year, um, I'll probably, probably be going to a game, you know? Really? Yeah, absolutely. I, mm-hmm. I love that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And I never really followed, like, I like the chargers, but I, I'm not a huge football guy. Um, and there was no NBA basketball in San Diego growing up. So I never really watched basketball either. So it was, it was pretty much baseball and then football during football season, but yeah, Padres, uh, it, would, it would be Padres. Good one. What about you? I mean, you're a Cleveland guy, so I'm going to guess Browns are number one. You know, the Browns are just slightly ahead of the soon-to-be Guardians. Yeah. Um, and then it's the Cavs. But it's not – like the distance between one and three, it's not like enormous. Right. It's very close. I was – my family had season tickets to the Browns since 1946. Wow. Season tickets for the Indians when they went into their new stadium. So in 94, my parents got them. And then we had Cavs season tickets from the early 80s on. Like, I was at the shot by Michael Jordan. Wow. I was cool. at the drive by John Elway. Yeah, I've been to some pretty sad shit in Cleveland. Yeah. Well, you know, was, your yeah. story reminded me, when I was in high school, I said one of the meanest things I've ever said. For no reason, to a teacher that I really, really liked, she was showing us videos of, or like a 
slideshow of her grandmother who had been going to every single 49ers home game for like 50 years, right? And for some reason, I just blurted out, why don't you tell her to get a life? And I don't know why I said it to this day. I don't understand. And she was like, what was that? Like, and I like kicked me out of the classroom, you know, like go sit outside, the you know, kind of thing. And I, I was sitting outside and I was like, why did I say that? <laughs> what is going on with me? Like, I, I try to, you know, be a little funny, a little off the cuff, you know, sometimes. Um, but that one was just so mean and it just it wasn't funny at all. Like, it, it was terrible. It's terrible. How old were you? Ball. I was uh, like a junior in high school. What a dick. Not- I know, I know. There's, that's like one of those things I think about to this day every now and then, you know, like when you're laying in bed at night and you're like about to go to sleep and you're like, why the fuck did I say that? <laughs> you know, and then you can't go to sleep because I'm thinking like every now and then maybe she'll see something about me, like, you know, that Grossmont tweeted out or something. And she'll be like, that guy was really mean that one day for no reason. So, yeah. By the way, like if you go to every Niners game for fifty years, you've seen some pretty good football. Mm-hmm. The last thirty, yeah, or forty. Yeah. I mean, like think about it. Since nineteen eighty one, you got to watch. There's only football. one. There's only one NFL franchise that's been more successful than them. The uh, Patriots. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Since nineteen eighty one, like y- y- so. On top of being an asshole. You were incorrect. I was also an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. No, believe me, I'm not, I'm not proud of that. That's not a moment that I'm proud of in my life. I regret it. I regret that. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. It's a vulnerable moment right there. <laughs> it was. You know what? Hopefully this has cleansed your soul a little bit and you feel a little bit better about it. Because I guarantee you we're going to play this clip and there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, I've, I've done it too. You know, we've all done it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. We'll get to mine somewhere down the road. Um, homework. I screwed up the homework because you were supposed to join us on an IG live at some yeah, point I know. while you were still. You to invite me, but it's fine. We'll still make that happen. Yeah. So for your next homework assignment, Mrs. Rose's homework assignment, uh, you guys come out to Los Angeles soon. We do. Yes, we do. Now, because of COVID, I don't think we're going to be able to see each other, but perhaps I can drive down to your hotel and take a video of us waving at each other. I would love that. That'd be great. Maybe you could get some teammates outside and get a little Rose Rotation chant going. Wow. I, I can promise you that that will not happen. Actually, I might have enough, I might have enough time now, and there's so many rookies here that I'm, I might be able to force people to do it. <laughs> but that seems a little, a little much. So I'll, but, I'll let you know. I'll definitely be there. But it's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like it when rookies are for you know, Justin Turner a few years ago on intentional talk. It was, uh, it was Millar's birthday, I want to say. And so he forced all the rookies to come out with hats and sing happy birthday. <laughs> yes. The power of the veteran. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I'm not like a super veteran yet, I'm, but there are so many young people on this team. It's crazy. So, but you are the most tenured pirate. Are you not? Polanco. Oh, and then, Chad Cool, and then me, I believe. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Polanco, Chad Cool, and then Steven. Steven. Who made a teacher cry. Yeah. Gosh. She didn't cry, I don't think. I think she was just like as shocked as I was that I said it. As soon as it left my mouth, I was like, why did I say that? You know? I have to say, though, that it's probably one of the top five stories we've heard in the podcast history. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's very, uh, it's very, uh, very honest. <laughs> it is. All right, man. Um, I, I think that'll do it for you. Oh, there you go. There's the Justin Turner oh, yeah. shot. I, I can't even that. tell who all the, all the rookies are. There's yeah, probably correct. somebody famous back there, but that was very nice to bring out a cap and, or bring out a, a cake and they're all wearing the hats. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. It's so nice to be back. Oh my god! I know. I'm happy for you. When? Where's your next start? Pittsburgh? Um, I'm not sure. We're running like, you know, six man rotation, and we have a day off on Monday, so I actually don't really know. It's probably Pittsburgh. Yeah. I was going to ask you this. So you, you've been in, to your place in Pittsburgh, right? No. For the season. 
because I was only there for a day this last time. So I still haven't been there. You haven't checked into your, what are you going to live there for two months and then call it a day? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I really hope it's nice at this point. You know, I'm, <laughs> I've built up the anticipation over the last five months. So we'll see, but it's uh, so weird. I was going to check in and then I was like, I'm, I don't have a car. So I'd have to Uber there and then Uber back tomorrow morning. So I just didn't do it. So yeah, where's your car? Dude, shipped, where's my car? Being shipped right now. So it should be in Pittsburgh when we get back. Do you have to pay for that or is it a team? Sometimes we do. Sometimes the team does. I think because I'm hurt, I think they're paying for it, but I'm not totally sure. I guess. Let's check I'll on this find shit, out. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I'll find out. But like when we go to spring training, you know, like if I don't want to drive my car, then yeah, you, know, you have to ship it out just because right. they fly you. I know we're wrapping up, but I was curious. I love Indianapolis. I think it's a great small city. Me too. I absolutely love Indy. Always. It was, it was cool to be back there because I was there for two weeks because the team was at home for two weeks, you know, in a row because of that minor league schedule where they're playing at the same team for six days. Uh -huh. So we were two home series in a row. So I was there for two weeks and it was awesome. And it was really cool to be back. A lot of people that I knew because I was there for, you know, the, most of two summers um that i became friends with and i you know i got to see again you know got to hit all the old haunts and then check out the new spots that are around and uh and it was so much fun it's a it's a i like that city a lot and the state go to saint elmo's uh no i went to harry and izzy's oh. so okay. saint elmo's is like i don't love the whole like absolutely quiet dark steakhouse vibe i like the more harry and izzy's is more yeah they're both they're both good it's just the uh it's from cocktail. They have Elmo's. that in Harry and Izzy's too. Yeah. yeah, I can't do it with the with the flaming sauce, though, man. I'm a, I'm done. You gotta do like the smallest amount. I'm just, I'm just... They'll toast you pretty good. Oh, yeah. All right, listen, man. Stay healthy. Continue to pitch well. Continue to swing the bat well. Have good at bats against good pitchers. I will do my best. And I'm so so happy you're back. I know it was not an easy four months for you. So I'm proud of you that you pushed through. Thank you very much. It is it is great to be back. And uh, and I'm planning on having some fun. You know, I, I love baseball. So I'm happy. To be yeah, back. you do. Any Anything you'd like to say to our producer, editor extraordinaire, Robbie Scirocco, before we get out of here? Yeah, I forgive you, Rob. Thank you, Stephen. Don't let it happen again. It will not happen again, I swear. And uh, thanks, as always, to our outstanding summer intern, Alden Stone. For Stephen Brault, I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.